All right, good evening. We are ready for the final match of tonight for the final week in season three. It is week 16 of EGFC brought to you by Intel. Uh, there's only one more match left. It's Sacramento State versus uh, Weber State University, and this actually could have some consequences. Uh, I'm Nerf here, joined by Tenric. You explain to us the, the, the context of this match. I would love nothing more than that, Nerf. See, here's the thing. Both these teams, they are also pretty late to the party. They don't have all the games under, the, under their belt, and because of that, every single game counts so much more for their percentage, and by extension, they're seeding a lot more than other games do this late into the season. This is both of these teams' last shots at getting either even or even more positive. Sacramento, right now, they're four and three. Pretty solid record to keep them in the top half of this seeding, and Weber, they are trying to claw to get back to their even state. Don't look at those rankings too hard because they are neither concrete nor I think even right for the time that it is currently. Right. I do not think that Sacramento is 11th and I do not think that Weber is 15th, but do not take me up on that. I do not completely know. Um, what I do know is both of these teams, they have a lot to play for here. They're right in the middle of the pack and by winning this game, either of them could move up the podium. For sure. Obviously, uh, Sacramento State has everything to gain by winning here versus Weber State. However, what this is, uh, it is still a long shot, but through a various amount of, like, I, I would say strong point uh, advantages in some of these sets, Weber, uh, Weber State could have the potential to make it in to those, uh, to those finals. I think it's going to be hard fought uh, because Sacramento State obviously has the positive win rate uh, going into this, going four and three so far, uh, they are positive on their set over under. So that is a pause. That is really good for them. Bodes well going into this. However, uh, these are, as you mentioned, relatively new teams. They don't have a rank or record for season two. Uh, this is them going to start off with uh, what we would expect, and that is their best. It's going to be Mario versus Bowser, the canon matchup. Actually, I, I'm just looking at these rankings a little bit more. I think what dictates their current standings is, is, is their point setups right now. Sacramento, they're 15th, and they have a winning record, but that's also because they have a losing point differential. And while, uh, meanwhile, uh, Weber, they also have a negative point differential, but it's a little bit less during their, uh, their negative record at the moment. So Sacramento, when they've lost, they've lost big. And that's why, honestly, despite the seeding difference, despite this 44 state i mean i think this matchup is even more even than we're predicting right now yeah i mean it could go either way at this point for the first matchup though we never know it's going so even between these two they're just trading blows finally a side b will uh will close the deal uh rito is able to take that stock and now beta uh unfortunately going to be taking a little bit of extra credit and any amount that you can take uh, for Bowser, I mean, that extra credit can go a long way because it is Bowser. It's a lot of risk reward here for Rito going for those big moves like the Fire Breath can do a lot of damage, and yet at the same time, Beta can get around a lot of those moves so quickly. If you don't land them, then you're up a creep without a paddle. Rito's only going to land 38 before getting trounced, Stan. I mean, you're Mario. You can get that back pretty quickly. Yeah, very, very quickly. And right now you're trying to bait out some of these up Bs going a little bit too hard out of shield. Now that's a lot of damage you're racking on with all three hits of the Nair. That's really, really big. And now Beta taking way too much damage here on ledge. He's getting even more with the flame breath, uh, petering out there, uh, trying to get some more pressure. But now the up air strain, this is looking real good. Oh! Wow. Oh! Clip okay, it and that's... skip it, boys. That was, wow. oh. That was gorgeous. That was and of course, like the holding out meant that uh, Rito was only susceptible to dying there. Uh, did not spike off the stage, unfortunately. And Beta gets a oh. big one. However, the two frame and then some, the F tilt coming out, a really nice edge guarding tool. Uh, Rito knows how to just have that in the back pocket. Rito, Rito got punched back into Smash 4 and then he punched his way right back with that forward tilt. Back online, back with these super oppressive moves out of shield and in the air. That fireball gonna stop him for a second, but Rito was patient, had that jump. Now gonna grab off of the ledge here, start finding a little bit of damage here. No, Beta kept jumping back until he had advantage again. He's playing this so patiently right now and it's leading to this continuous advantage that this Mario is keeping. 
right? I mean, you're seeing it. Ryu kind of over-relying on some of the tools like the Nair to get in. Maybe the Flame Breath in this moment. That's just more damage. Unfortunately, you are bound. You're going to live for but uh, for a little bit longer. Mario is looking for one of these stronger kill options. Oh! The up smash is one of them. And the run up, turn around, up smash. That is the Mario special just to put the cherry on top for the game. Man. They don't want to uh, want to pull out all all the Mario stuff for mm -hmm. that game. I mean, that was like that was everything you wanted to watch if you wanted to watch some Mario. You know, a lot yeah, of strings, absolutely. a forward air in the mix, a solid up smash on a turner. Like that was just about everything you wanted to see. And canonically, it's accurate, so we don't right, have right. to like be sued by Nintendo or anything. <laughs> so so true. Uh, now we're looking at some of these replays. Like you can see the big reads coming out. Beta just knows where Rito's going to go. Again, covering multiple options with that up smash was very very clever. Uh, we're still getting some of Check these tilt, like though. pressure Real options by, by Bowser. Yeah, Bowser still has some good stuff. Yeah. No. I, look, Rito was just a little behind, a little too Ugh. often there. Oh, and then, just look at that string, yeah. dude! Oh took him all the way across the stage. Yep. That's ah, unreal, um, man. Up unreal. the platform, down off the platform. Yeah, that was that was definitely flashy. But this F tilt was well timed, uh, knowing to cover that For space. Sure. Absolutely no. Uh, Rito is absolutely not out of this set just yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Just did so much damage in the moments that he could. Uh, yeah. Just needs to not get strung up as much and uh, okay. find the right times to to buffer from stuff to buffer from stuff to buffer some stuff up excuse me yes yeah um, to to get out of those sticky situations whether that's out of shield or out of the air Ada may already be predicting that kind of thing is that first flying fortress is not going to hit the second one will though yeah so we're on cows this and is an interesting stage pick because it is bowser you're looking for some of those side views on the platforms Boing. there it is there you're not going to get the reach you, uh, you need and Ada is going to have to be very careful and try to control where they're landing with that side B whenever they do get back. Or hopefully just try to avoid that in the first place. I think the thing with this choice of Kalos is Rito, I think, is a little more aware of the fact that Beta on that Mario is going to get a lot more enjoyment and connection out of the platforms a little more consistently than that Flying Slam landing on the platforms. I think that True. Bowser also has a lot more fun when, uh, or, or has a lot less fun than other characters when he's on top of somebody else. He can get really strung up uh, from just one little jump from Mario. And so I think the the benefits of having a flatter stage like Kalos outweigh the uh, the kind of lack of lack of platforms that you can get a flying slam out of. I think that's why we saw the final destination ban coming out from uh, from Beta as well as start things off. I think they're just as as uh, just as aware of that. Like Mario needs these platforms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, and you can see it right there. Trying to get the uh, the forward smash, almost going to do it, but still, Bowser is super heavy. You're not going to be able to kill that easily. Uh, right now, all of the percent that, uh, that Rito was able to get on beta did pay off in that first stock. Right now, he's already starting off very, very strong to get the second one, but the parry actually gets potentially beta back in, but it gets the grab afterwards. So Rito, again, able to control neutral very, very well. Rito keeping that center. Making sure that this edge guard goes well. Nice down tilt. Just keep that pressure. Beta will still make it back on, but Rito's right back on line. Back throw will not kill just yet. Again, that discipline, making sure that he saves that jump for after the fireball hit. Ooh. But Beta goes deep, and with the nail, we'll get the finisher, but he's already at 106. Yeah, that's a lot of damage, especially you're at kill percent because it is Bowser. So anything that you uh, that you do now is kind of on a timer. You've got to be very careful because Bowser's going to get one of these big hits. These forwarders have been connecting very consistently uh, for, for Raito, so... I don't know. I don't know. Beta is getting caught by another F tilt. That does not bode well. And they still have yet to figure out the right getup option against Bowser. Rito's got to do it one more time. Another flying fortress to get the damage pumping and get out of that close quarters combat that Bowser hates against this Mario sometimes. Wants to get that one hit and then get back out. Keep that spacing alive. Nice and there to keep that tension going. 36% though. Hasn't really found too much just yet. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of up out of shield. Uh, Rito might be going for it a little bit much. <gasps> Doesn't get pushed out by the flood. Very, very lucky there. Um, good job to, to make sure that they had the drift as well. I like that up throw there good. from Rito. That's some good pressure. Yeah. Just keeping him up a, 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 as much as he can without those platforms uh, over him. Up smash to cover oh. that jump option, but it is ready for it. Another uh -oh. flood. Oh, he misses nice. the cave. He has a little more time. Oh. And still alive, I mean, even with the crazy DI, 
Uh, Beta, unfortunately, not able to get that kill. Goes for the cape, can't connect it. I love the, I love the idea, right? It was a good, good idea. No, this is great. If Rito can get this, then not only will Sacramento be ahead, but they have a shot at, uh, at getting. Yeah, they'll, they'll have a shot at taking this first set. So no shutouts on this first set just yet. Both teams have scored, and Sacramento has scored even bigger here. Yes. This, this is taken to three. For sure, yeah, we're going to game three. This is uh, this is the true test, right? Like, was it the the stage pick, or can you clutch it out in game number three as well? Uh, if you're Rito, I, I'm interested because Beta again looked very dominant in the first game. Had some great Mario uh, connections. Like, you're getting the straight hits that you need, quick kills like that kill Bowser at reasonable percents. Um, it was it was good. I think we just need to see more of that right now. Uh, again, I think Rito's play in the neutral kind of elevated in that in that in that game. Yeah, and, and just I, I think Beta's lack of elevation for a lot of that game really had a lot to do with it as well. Not nearly as much mm. edge guarding could happen on that Bowser. You had to rely on the flood more uh, more than the aerials a little more because of that platform just above you on that ledge. No ledges right, right in the middle, or, or you have no platforms in the middle, so you can't get some solid la yeah. ladder combos in there. Mario definitely doesn't have as good a time on, on Kalos. Um, they're gonna ban uh, Yoshi and both the battlefields. Uh, that that's what uh, that's what Rito is gonna ban. Okay. I mm. can get that. And yeah, we're gonna take it to Smashville, which I think Mario can can vibe just fine with. That is true. Uh, the difficult part is Bowser does still cover a lot of space on mm. Smashville, and it, Bowser is massive. It is kind of hard to get around him. Um, particularly when he's going for some of this upkeep stuff, we did see the smaller stage, or at least like whenever there's kind of less space between the two, Beta does get caught by those sometimes. They're gonna need to kind of figure out and adapt so that they are getting uh, basically free that free damage uh, for for Rito. And there's also that really tiny blast zone on the sides there. So uh, if Rito really finds a hit at such an earlier percent at this point, then. Beta's in a lot of trouble. I think Rito has really figured out not only this matchup, but this set. And I, I think he's adapted really well, but adapting against Mario can only take you so far. He's still got to win that fight, and Beta is keeping pace so far. Yeah, for sure. This is looking a lot closer. We're seeing uh, some good trades. This is looking a lot closer to like game one, where they were trading the first stock back and forth, back and forth. Uh, but eventually we did see Beta take that first stock, so it was really important. Maybe if they can do the same Ooh. here, that will... Oh no, that's not Ooh. good. Fortunate kind of uh, trades going back and forth. Both of the players were at those high percents, so it was one hit, and then going to the other side of the ledge, and then the other player hits, and then goes to the other side of the ledge, and then eventually Rito made his move, went to the center, spot dodged, and got that flying slam out, and now, oh, massive amounts of damage already coming in the double flame breath 35 percent rito staying oppressive yeah. here can beta get the finisher not just yet yeah still looking for the cave just trying to, i don't know exactly what they're looking for right there is an up smash for sure but oh! you're gonna get caught by the run oh! ball forward smash oh! no not that that's smashville baby oh. that's bowser on smashville oh With my rage. god full rage. and he full lives rage. dude and full rage you right oh my god that was gross, yeah. dude. That was gross. Well, it tries to go for the Bowser side. Do not. Good on Beta to not let that happen. Two stocks to one. Beta finds that damage quickly. Got the ladder going up on the platform. Not done just yet. 78% can't get the grab. So Rito's back in the neutral, but yeah. he's kept distance. Yeah, honestly, I, I, we need to see one of those Ooh. Mario combos that we saw in game one. We need to see those up air strings lead into something big. However, I mean, that was a DI mix up. Rito was not ready for that. That time probably is this time. So has to figure out how they're going to get this kill and quickly because uh, their extra credit is starting to rack up. 123 can beta equalize here. Hasn't been hit in a little while. Fireball to stall things out. And that dash attack so active on that ledge. Yep. Rito in constant danger. Flying Fortress pokes through the shield. Beta's lost all his control here. And Rito oh. is back at this gigantic amount of rage now. Forward air does so much at this point. 71%. One move could kill here. Yeah, just trying to get them back off stage. Again, back throw not going to kill at this percent. Looking for any kind of two frame option. Not going to hit, hit yet again. There it is, the dash attack still. Oh. There has to go deep. I love it, goes for the Nair. Um, a really good option. However, um, they've got to plant their feet and make sure they don't take too much damage here. Trying yeah. to get it back in, in control. 
Oh yeah, Beta's got to play to that fear and, and, and fully understand it. You know, walk into some damage. Sometimes if it means you keep on surviving, you know, be ready for these disadvantage states and get out of them as quickly as possible or you're gonna get down, Bede! Wow. Reno takes game three, takes a 4-1 lead for Sacramento. Honestly, that was risk-free. That was that absolutely posed no risk. That was absolutely completely 100% optimal. Um, that was disgusting. It was really smart because you get the ledge cancel, right? And then yeah. either way, you either hit or you don't and you snap to ledge and you just kind of like maybe set up for something, something more. Exactly. You have that damage to burn. You have that spacing right. You have the ledge control out of nowhere. You you gain so much out of a move like that, out of the position that Rito was in. Just managed that so well after losing that second stock, is able to take that third game. Nice, Sacramento. Man, that's that's a great start to a matchup that is as as tense and really decisive as, uh, as this one needs to be for either team. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I, I think that sets the standard for the rest of the set. You got to have your teammates backing you up uh, in the next four sets so that you can continue to, to gain those points. Again, points are just as important as the win here because they when they want the they want the win rate, but um, I mean, the points can actually help them uh, even further. So I think right now the win rate looking pretty good. If Sacramento is able to, again, you know, bring it to a 5-3, that's very, very good for them going into the end of the season. So uh, Weber State still has the chance to make something for themselves, but uh, I think the one point on the board, uh, that does mean that they're in this game or at least a little bit, they can go to game three. They can take some points, uh, which is, again, even more even more important for them. They need those points. Absolutely. No, it's it's four to one right now. This score is, is, is still very contentious. That first set is just a little bit of consolation that Sacramento can work with, but they need to take it and run for their lives right now. They need to keep this momentum going. They need to win at least two more sets. Honestly, in my mind, three, if they really want to keep this. I mean, Weber, they could get some blowouts going and reduce this lead to dust if they even take two games. So yeah. I, I think Sacramento still absolutely got to stay on their toe. Yeah, for sure. Nothing is a given here. So, you know, both of these teams are going to be fighting because they know that this is a very, very crucial uh, match for them. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, that was already uh, a bit of a slugfest. Two good characters, I would say. Like, Bowser, probably the best heavy in the game, if not if it's not Charizard, right? Um, but, uh, you know, Mario's crazy. Mario's absolutely crazy. Still, people underrate Mario. Still. Oh, always. Yeah, of course. No, Mario's really solid. Um, just... Sorry. Oh, yeah, I did math. You did math? I did bad math. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um... Gotcha. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm terrible at math. I thought it was 4-1. It's absolutely 5-1. <laughs> My bad, chat. I'm so sorry. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, because oh, I, I thought, yeah, I forgot it's 1 plus the 2. So, me big dumb. Gotcha, yeah. I'm sorry, Juke. I'm sorry, Prod. Juke's our Prod. He got the score right. I did not. I'm dumb. He's smart. He's amazing. Um, but anyways, um, I here's yes. here's my problem is like Sacramento is like they have the winning record, right? And yet, as I said before, their point differential is negative right now. Four and three, yeah. and their wins have been close, their losses have been blowouts, is what that means. 75 and and 90. And so um, Sacramento, I yeah. don't think they want to just win this. They want to win big so they can, you know, they can leave right. this season on a note that reflects their record. I mean, I still think that they have a lot of gas in the tank, right? Like, I mean, oh, clearly yeah. they might have just gotten a bad run. I'd have to see what what losses they took, but like mm -hmm. it could very well have been the like the top three teams that just completely were that like, yes, were yeah. the blowouts. I'm hoping that that's like give them the benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah, that that is a very hard team to, to take points against for sure. But I mean, at this point, they have the ability to take take points against Sacramento State. They've shown it. They just need to clutch the set. And honestly, the set is the most important part because it's like you get the two points for the set. That's that's worth two stocks right there. <laughs> All right, I think we are going to yeah, we're going to Battlefield. Okay. Next up. They are uh, they're banning Town and City and PS2 starting this game right. off? Any sort of predictions on what we'll see? Uh, over from, I'm trying to figure out which school they are from. <laughs> uh, so I think uh, Weber is probably Ray. I think I think Reb Weber. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so whether they're yeah. sending in Ray and so Sora they, is coming the in next for Sacramento. So okay, I think so, I've seen Sora. Okay. Uh, so, I, I think they do play Sora. I think they do play Sora. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Weber band, um, Weber band, Town and City and Kalos. Okay. Gotcha. Hmm. Town and City and Kalos. I'm trying to figure oh no! Out. So so Kalos so Kalos isn't. Uh, or sorry, starter, no. So. Town and City and so uh, and PS2. PS2. Yeah. So. So they're okay. gonna go battlefield. Yeah, they're gonna go battle. I'm trying to figure out who would ban who who would who would want to ban those two maps. I'm trying to um, think. Um. Well, I mean, yeah, if you're thinking about banning Town and City and Kalos, you're probably going to, probably thinking, like, maybe a like Rush Death, ladder. maybe, like, Falcon, maybe, like, Falcon. Yeah. Like, another guy uh, who, maybe like... Maybe ZSS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I don't know. ZSS would like Town. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe, like, a, like, a, like, a Sheik? Or, like, a... Uh, That's a good point. Just, like, someone Honestly. quick and agile, I think. I would be very surprised if it was Sheik, though. Oh, yeah. No, me um, too. Oh, so, okay, oh, so, yeah, Sora Falcon. Falcon. Hit the nail so good at this. Oh, right on the head, nerd. Done. So good at this. Um, yeah, so Battlefield makes sense. Uh, Sora actually benefits from Battlefield as well. A full up B will take you from ground to top platform. Uh, you can do a reset there. That's nice. Uh, so both of these characters can benefit here. I love that he's going Golden Falcon. I know it's ugly. I know a lot of people don't like it. I love this skin. It's a, it's a, it's definitely a divisive skin. I like it. I, I, I guess I like all of Falcon skins honestly because I feel like Falcon's personality kind of doesn't need you to validate his clothes. He just, he just, he just wants to style on you, and he absolutely will. That's true. That's true. You know. Um, but right now, I think uh, this matchup going kind of how I expected. Uh, I don't think, I don't think Captain Falcon does very well against Sora. Yeah, Falcon loves those sorts of those sorts of strings, and Sora's physics are just so strange. I feel like Falcon can't get a handle on him a lot of the time. So Sora taking a quick lead off, and uh, yeah, I mean one smash attack, hell, even enough zoning. Yeah, with a Thundog is gonna finish it. Sora Absolutely. early lead, well done. You know, you can just throw those spells out for practically free. You just keep cycling through them. And the the, uh, the Thundaga, honestly, one of the best edge guarding tools in the game because it is relatively risk free. Um, these these side beat disjoints, all of the sword stuff, that is a real issue for Captain Falcon. He already struggles against a lot of swordies. Um, oh! And finally being able to pin down Sora is Ray right now. That is a very much needed kill. Uh, now getting some great extra credit. This could be very nice. A nice set of strings here for Captain Bell. Yeah, this is massive. You got to farm this damage quick now that you've uh, now that you've kind of evened things up. And Ray is absolutely doing so. Already up to forty eight percent and making sure that Sora doesn't have uh, much room to breathe at the moment. Because the second the second Sora has that space, he's gonna fill it with something. Whether that's a spell or a, or a side B or or some sort of aerial approach into this up smash, which we've already seen three times in this one game, and it's worked every single time so far. And it's made Sora basically at the same percent as this is ridiculous. Sora just does so much damage out of nowhere it's nuts yeah absolutely and being as elusive as he is like being able to just kind of like float oh, no. in and out be completely non-committal um it's very very nice and Sora's benefits I, I think a lot from having amazing drift you can get around some of the captain falcon stuff and uh, the, oh. the counter coming out able to combo break i love it i forgot Sora has a counter i was like i feel like i'm forgetting one of the moves he does oh yeah the down beat yeah, just able to make sure that that knee doesn't work again. And oh, he's such a skitterer. Sora's such a skitterer. And it's yep. fun to watch, but at the same time, I feel so bad for Ray, who just feels like every single time he's got the move down, it's like, okay, this is the time I pin this Sora down. And you just don't. Yeah. And right now, getting caught by too many dash jacks. It is, he is dealing alive, but oh. eventually, yep. Oh. The Thundaga catches you, well spaced by Sora. Uh, Ray is looking for some of this stuff. Um, but right now, can't find a necessary kill option, and you're gonna get comboed a little bit by some of the resets with the Nair. Nice coverage with the Thundaga yet again, and Sora just making sure Ray needs to keep their distance, so this stock uh -oh. is elongated, farming some damage, 40%, keeping him on the platform, continuing to farm, 57%, and now we're back to the distance play again. Right, and then being able to like be very light and getting out of some of the confirms that Captain Falcon wants. Like he's looking for me, not able to find because he launches you so far up. If there is a two stock here, that could mean something big for Sacramento going forward in yeah. this series, but they gotta finish this quick. Ray could easily find a move or two here, and we saw how quickly he can find the damage yet again. Ooh. That back air will finish things off, so it will be a one-point game. Whoever ends up winning it, and Sora 
Needs to win it soon or else could mean curtains for the Sacramento State player for this first game in the set. Yeah, so far, I mean, it is looking like Ray is on the hunt, trying to get these combos. However, again, Sora very, very slippery. You're going to get caught in all three of the side B hits. Uh, and then oh, all three hits of the Thundaga, 150%. Uh, Captain Falcon with full range could be good if you stay alive. That is the challenge. And the wonkiest of hitboxes from the F tilt, able to hit you. And <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Sora is kind of busted. I told you, this, Dude, this matchup is so hard for Captain Sora Falcon. goes stupid sometimes, Legitimately, man. Legitimately, some of the freest edge guarding. Like you Half just of that edge guarding B. was literally pressing B. That Press literally B. Sora staying completely stagnant and just pressing B, and it just yep. worked. Because eventually, he got back to Thundaga, and eventually yep. it landed and ended up killing him. Exactly. Like I said, oh, you just man. cycle through him, and if you spaced yourself right, that is all you have to do. You literally just stand at the right distance from ledge, and... As long as one of the uh, the Thundagas like literally hits right next to ledge, you're good. You're golden. Yeah, I, I feel like Sora is gonna find a really solid place in this metagame soon enough because he does really well against a lot of characters that have a lot of prominence. He starts losing matchups as you go up the tier list for sure, but against a yeah. lot of these characters like Captain Falcon that sort of cause their own mischief in their own sort of way. I mean, Sora kind of throws all that out the window and is like, "Nah, we're playing my game." Right. I mean, Sora loves it when people kind of. Uh, try to rush down because he's like, well, first of all, I have a disjoint. I'm not really worried about that. Second of all, <laughs> I can literally whiff punish in some of the easiest ways of any character. So that's very interesting. We're going to see the uh, Kalos Lilat and SV hands. I don't know. Okay, now we're getting three bands. I'm not sure what's going on here, but okay. Because you got we a got, counter pick in there. I guess so. But we're banning Kalos Lilat and SV, and then Small Battlefield is going to be the pick. So let's see. Mm -hmm. um, I think it could I think it could work. However, Sora is just kind of dominant on small battlefield as well as regular battlefield. It's kind of hard. You don't get the top platform pressure, but also you have the side pressure regardless. I yeah, I feel like we might see, you know, uh, the same story different episode in a moment here on this on this small battlefield, you know, we'll just see the same amount of control exhibited by Sora. It's just on a smaller plane, and maybe that just means it'll kill earlier. Maybe, I don't know, Ray is hoping for, like, an early knee off the side? Should this happen? I mean... Maybe. I mean, we're just taking away this the top platform, which honestly, I think, can only really benefit Captain Falcon. I don't know. Right. I get the... I will say, I get the Lilat and Smashville bans, though. I guess if there is a stage that you would rather play, you would rather play Small Battlefield over Lilat or Smashville if you're in this matchup. It's just still not a good one. Right, I certainly wouldn't want to fight Sora on Lilat. <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, Absolutely right not. Now, Honestly, yeah. no matter what character I want to play, I'm going to counter pick, I'm going to counter ban Lilat. Like, that's, that's yeah. what I'm going to do yeah. regardless. Yeah, it's a habit at this point. Um, but right <laughs> now, uh, Sora off to another great start here. Uh, still creating a lot of this great pressure, trying to uh, trying to figure out the mash on the Blazaga. Uh, it just gets a little extra percent for it. Woo! Nice lead into the up smash. That's true, by the way. <laughs> God. God. Oh, God. Uh, I'm starting to feel a little sick to my stomach. Yeah, Sora, Sora kind of nice with it. You know, it's like, that's... He's, the, that's <laughs> the he wasn't letting his mans breathe. <laughs> Uh, 49% from Sora so far, and he's basically taken the same amount. The difference is there's a stock on uh, on on Ray's uh, UI that's uh, just like a little bit not there right now. Up air string here. Oh, nice catch on the end there, but no killing blow just yet. And that Thundaga can cover the recovery. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can protect yourself uh, so that you don't uh, get wrecked on ledge. Uh, you're just trying to, again, create more pressure. Getting caught by it way too much. Uh, Ray just letting go of shield at the inopportune moments. Uh, Sora able to barrel his way back into stage yet again. Sora keeping that center available. Ooh, Falcon okay. kicking to finish things off, though. Good approach there from Ray to finish things off quickly. A little yes. bit risky, but at that point, you know, you're so abrupt with it, and there's only so much space you can run from in Small Battlefield that Falcon is more than happy to launch something like that out. Yeah, I mean, right there, it looked like signs of life from Ray trying to get some of these combos, but now uh, the three hits coming out from Sora. Right now, Ray cannot seem to get the approach option, even with as good of aerial speed as Captain Falcon has. 
Saurus just got all the control in the world. Can rush down when he wants to, throw a projectile when he wants to, counter when he wants to, because he has that too, I guess. Yep. Another yep. Falcon Kick to gain that space back, but if one Fireaga has done so much. Like, Sora just yeah. pressed B once off stage, and Ray just had to let him come back. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I'm interested to see what is going to happen here. Oh. Uh, the, the Blizzard going to actually catch the full up B. Does not kill. Good DI, though, from Ray. Uh, the Thundaga on deck looking like that could be the edge guard here. Uh, it's going to come out. We're gonna, good going all the way in using the shield from the ledge of Battlefield. Good <laughs> mix up on the mash. Not going for it. Sora trying to time it right to get that up B kill done Ooh. quickly. Yeah, that setup's done now that Sora's too high. Ray's missed a window of opportunity here. But so is Sora to an extent. 166. I mean, Ray does a lot of damage at the moment. And it's all about timing here. Doesn't do the mash again. Ray survives another Blizzard. Can find a little more damage here. Every second that Ray stays alive is a second that Sora is in so much more imminent danger. And he's starting to adapt, starting to recover more inside. But Sora can finish things off here with the dash attack. Now he's trying to farm something real quick before he falls again. Right, gets a little bit more percent off the rapid jab instead of opting for the gentleman. Now, oh! good read on the oh! up tilt. What a perfect opportunity, unwasted by Ray. Uh, definitely saw it and went for it. I respect it so much. That's exactly what he needed in that moment. That was raw up tilt damage right there. Sora's prepared for it the next time, though, with the counter again, dealing the damage right back, and now he's back in the lead yet again. Rapid jab will set things back to an end-to-end -end sort of battle scenario, which is kind of where Ray doesn't exactly want to be, if you're being honest with yourself, against this Sora. He wants to stay close. He wants to find these strings. He doesn't want to go for these finishing attacks just yet. He wants to get him to a killing percent before he goes for that, but he just can't get there yet. He has to get inside, and he's having so much trouble doing it. Right, and right now we're seeing Sora able to kind of force his way back onto stage. Ray, unfortunately, losing stage control as a result. Now getting hit yet again. This percent just keeps going up and up. And now looking for another read. Good air dodge. And this could be a very nice punish. We're just looking for one big read. And Captain Falcon can kill Sora extremely early. That's all he needs is one opportunity. Only two minutes left on the clock. This game has been going yeah. for a hot minute and neither side is really letting up. Race survivability has gone through oh. the roof since the beginning of this set, and it's not stopping. These buffers are getting so much better from him. He's learning the psychology nice. of this Blizzaga setup that Sora has kept going for, and while Sora can get back on stage quickly, there's going to come a time where he can be punished for something, oh, anything man. that he does wrong. I thought we were going to see another up to, but we do not. Still getting caught by the Thundaga. That's unfortunate. The edge guard ends, and now Sora able to basically reset to neutral, trying to get something here. Good shield on the Blizzaga, and the shield grab as well. Unfortunately, that is going to hit you. The disjoint of the down air. Uh, I definitely wouldn't have expected it, and I would probably got hit by that too. So shout out to Ray. Uh, that unfortunately does happen. Sora takes it. That was such a unique choice there from Sora. I absolutely yeah. adored that. That was so smart from them, and yet so stupid at the same time that it that it just worked. Just uh, yeah. a nice disjoint that you can work with in a very strange position. In a very strange position that kind of right. uh, trumps a lot of the hitboxes that would be. Uh, that would be kind of achieved by a lot of the strings that Ray would have wanted to go for in a position like that with most other Smash characters. So I think yeah. that was a really great choice from Sora and a great way to finish off that second set after a very long-winded and well-fought set between both of these players. Sacramento will once again take things. Yeah, that was a really long game. Actually, like, Sora, I mean, bringing it right down to the wire, played a very patient game. Ray tried to pick his shots where he could and... To his credit, he got a lot. He got very, very close to really making it count. Uh, we saw it go to last stock even, uh, and then last hit as well. So I think that one more opportunity, uh, and again, Ray just needed the one read, and he was looking for it there. He just gets caught by the down air. I mean, yeah, no, Ray just, he kept it nice and tight. It was a, that, that's a four-point set. That's the lowest you can score 
uh, for a for a total win as long as your yep. opponent doesn't win the other set. And so right. that's very well done by by Ray to kind of keep Sacramento at bay and also uh, or Sacra yeah Sacramento at bay and also mm -hmm. sort of uh, sort of on their toes because again it's an eight point lead which is really not that huge especially right. when it's after winning two whole right. sets. Weber, I mean right. they still have a lot of catch up to play, but it it's been really tight every right. single time. Right, I mean, this is definitely, like, you can close this gap in one set, theoretically. You'd yeah. have to do two, three stocks, but you could do it. <laughs> and honestly, if if all the sets are that close, um, Weber State is going to need probably a stronger a stronger hand, I think, in this next one if they want to make make this, this whole match possible, just because yeah. um, they can't really make up that difference with just those close sets, right? Yeah. They would need a little bit more... Uh, leeway to play around with more more cushion um so unfortunately they're not going to get it there they are going to lose the set sacramento again breaks away a little bit but um again back and forth set could have gone either way we've seen game three already uh, could happen again yeah whoever they've got to find the power somewhere they're going to hope they do it with diara this time sacramento is going to send in j cost and we're starting with smashville ban coming from weber okay so yeah probably zoner yeah, probably. <laughs> and then a battlefield and town ban from uh, from Sacramento, as uh, as well. So yeah, I think um, hmm, very interesting. I'm wondering. I'm trying to think of what kind of matchup we might see. Cause yeah, probably a zoner from Weber. I've yeah, seen Final Cost, I just don't know. I just don't know who Jacos plays. I'm just mm. trying to remember. I'd love to see like a Samus. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. Hmm. I've definitely seen a, a Samus before. Okay, mm -hmm. at least one, at least one Samus in each UFC. Um, I just don't remember where it is, but I know that they do exist. So mm -hmm. a good Wi-Fi, a good Wi-Fi character, very, True. very, very possible. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think Samus could do just fine in in those bands and also on a stage like Final Destination. Um, yeah. For the bands for Battlefield and Town, um, mm. Honestly, that might be more preventative for Sacramento, just again for those platforms. If if they kind of recognize that Smashville ban, they're kind of they're kind of making sure that whoever uh, Weber ends up picking kind of won't have as many options to work with yeah, going into I can the see game. That. Yeah, that's hmm. very possible. I would say um, at that point. You gotta be a little bit more proactive. You can't be reactive at that point. So you just have to yeah. ban the ban the stage that you're least comfortable with, or at least like your character does not want to deal with. So, of course, yeah. In that first game of the set, especially when you're blind, like right. it's it's always better to kind of ban first, ask questions later. Um, and you can't even you can even ban based on like certain archetypes, right? Because it's like some zoners like FD, some zoners don't like FD, that's right? True. There's a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a big guessing game if you're if you're gonna try and ban like that, which is why uh, which is why Sacramento probably didn't. Um, <laughs> mm. um, yeah, I we haven't seen Final Destination too much in uh, mm. in these sets so far. We've we've True. seen it maybe once or twice, um, True. but but not very often. And I can understand why because a lot of characters they're just a lot more comfortable on other stages than Final Des than Final mm. Destination. It's that kind of pick where your your top picks have sort of been uh, uh, been out of the question already. And um, yeah. I I like FD personally. It, it's very basic, sure, but I think it allows for a lot of very different play styles from characters sure. who we would normally see kind of kind of have their own playground. Sure. I mean, I personally, I would never. I, I don't think I would go to FD, but I don't have any issue with it being on a stage list or even as a starter, right? Like, I right. think that it definitely is a, a stage that does not have uh, another equal, right? It's just a stage with no platforms. It's been a staple in every Smash game. Um, so there's no there's no surprise. Like, FD definitely has a place, and we're going to see it right here. Uh, it's going to be Robin Whoa! versus Robin. This is not what I expected, even Whoa! in the slightest. A ditto? But also a Robin did. That's so sick, dude. Yep, double no. taunt. Yeah, yep, yep. taunt at each other. Show us how it's done. Yep, yep, dude, yep. I love Robin so much, and I get to see it really? twice. 
Okay, hype. Okay, I like that. So uh, this is definitely an interesting, uh, interesting match because guess what? Robin is one of those like you can do so much. You can do so much. There's a, a very, very broad kit you can do so much stuff with. Uh, lots of mix-ups on your, your thunder charge, all that kind of stuff. It's really important. Yeah, Robin. Robin is just this treasure trove of uh, of a kit that you can kind of manipulate however you really want to play. Um, honestly, I, I feel like Robin could be so differently played by a lot of different characters if he was a little faster, but they're not. And so the play styles kind of eventually circle back to the same kind of thing, which is this hybrid zoner that tries to lock Ooh. in with a zap or a fire spell, and then Ooh. go in with your with your Levin sword. A couple trades like with the Nosferatu, trading, Nosferatu. I like that, yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. They, they know, and you can see the shield break setup being attempted there. Uh, they they definitely know how to get out of those, or at least they should. They know they should know their character strengths and weaknesses back and front. Uh, right now, trying to go a little bit deep is caught by the Elwyn, but this could be a punish. <laughs> I love seeing the uh, seeing the Elwyn countered by Elwyn countered by Elwyn, oh. but Jcost is out of the Elwins because yeah. they used that last one to try and spike down Diara, and they've lost that first stock because of it, but. Jaycost still has that lead at the moment. Ooh. Spikes him with the Elwin, and Tyara can't make it back. Dude, I love and this character. That's what we're looking for right there. Jaycost, uh, I've seen that Robin before. Uh, definitely, they have some good item play. So far, I want to see the same out of Diara, but right now, it doesn't even matter. Free Levin Sword gets plus an Arc Thunder. That's. Uh, <laughs> What? Okay, wow, Jacob's just trying to style as much as possible. Iora's gotta get out of the blender. That was so weird, Jacob's, and kind of unlucky, but got the Levin Sword back, could kill at any moment just now. Jacob's could find this two stock out of nowhere. The Elwin's so dangerous, dude. Oh, man. This is so exciting. Oh, the read. Oh, my God, Jacob's. Decisive first game in the Robin. Ditto. Two stocks up. Now 11 to 1 Sacramento. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's very impressive there. Jay Cost looking real, real, real strong. Um, let's take a look. So we see some of this stuff. This attempted spike. Uh, then it ended up costing. I thought, no, that, wait, this is the, oh, this is the best okay, yeah, Here yeah, we go. Here we go. One. Yeah, so there you go. So yeah, loses out and then gets sent off. Uh, unfortunately, it was for the Thunder, didn't realize they were out. Or maybe they thought they would have it back in time. They had to have been mashing B mm, true, for true, that true. moment, but they were just a little too late. If only That's they air dodged instead, and, and then yeah. they could have preserved themselves for just a little bit longer. But hey, Jay Cost, I'm sure that they are perfectly satisfied with how that first game went. But they got to win one more to mm. clinch this third set. I love that. I love that. That run up, run back, run up of Smash. That's gorgeous. That's what you're looking for because, I mean, you're just hoping that they jump out of shield. Just be like, please, try to escape, <laughs> try to escape. That is the so, hard, I mean, yeah, uh, it's a great read because Robin doesn't have a lot of great immediate out of shield options. You have to set yourself up after you get out of that disadvantaged state. And so yeah. that, that's a great understanding of right. your own character and how to play against it. Very well done by Jake Cost. And right. we'll see if they can do it again. We're banning Battlefield, Lilat, and Town in City, which again, I mean, we're playing the same character. So I'm sure neither of these guys have any problem with where we end up going. Yeah, for sure. They know which stages are better. It's mostly just like what's most comfortable for you at that moment. And hopefully that is less of a comfort pick for your opponent. Uh, you know, the, uh, the character's strengths and weaknesses can be on display in these stages um, where we can see them go to Yoshi's. Okay, that's very unusual. I would <laughs> never have expected Yoshi's for Robin, but all right, mm -hmm. let's go. Yeah, That's a I wonder up. how they're gonna use. Yeah, I wonder how they're gonna use the ledges there, especially. I feel like Robin might be able to pull off some weird like Elwin stuff with yeah. those with that edge guarding. Maybe sure. I don't. I don't know. I don't know the character. I don't know how you can slant those sorts of spells, but maybe you can get some uh, some weird fire or Elwin stuff going with those with those off angles. Um, I'd yeah. love to see how that pans out, and and that's what we're yeah. about to do. We're about to head into sick. game number two between Jaycost and Diara, Sacramento and Web uh, and Weber State. This is set number three, and we see a switch onto the Mithra and Pyra. Okay. That makes a lot more sense now that we're yeah. going to Yoshi's. Uh, that completely... Yeah, that, that explains everything. So now we're going to use Mithra's incredible speed and disjoint to hopefully box out Jacos. That's going to be the goal here. Oh. However, oh. you got to not die in those situations because it's Yoshi's. I'm sorry. That sort of... That chain... That terrified me to my core. That yeah. was ridiculous. That was 
Oh my god. Oh, J Cost. You can tell J Cost has got this matchup pretty set. Oh no. Didn't have the drift to get back, unfortunately. Has to make up the difference here with Pyra. Obviously, incredible kill power, uh, but you're still getting caught by some of these uh, these art fires. Okay. Uh, getting caught in again on this center stage. J Cost doesn't have the Levin at the moment. Just got it back. Oh, back yeah. I mean, honestly, that's here. the best time. That's the best time to go in oh, when, yeah. when Robin's like waiting for the Levin sword because you don't have that range or the hit stun. Nosferatu counteracted again. Up B on that charge up. Make sure that Jacos doesn't have a moment to rest. Okay, oh, wow. No. Yeah, Oops. tragic edge guard. Accidental air dodge. You yeah. hate to see it. Jacos gonna lose that one for free. Now the shield break setup comes out. Good roll back from Dyar. I'm not gonna get caught by a character that they know themselves. Wait, maybe? Actually, Foresight. Cool. Foresight, thank this is, well, this character is very good. Haha, -ha, you forget about Foresight. <laughs> Just like everyone good. else who plays against this character, no matter how often they play against this character. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like it shouldn't have the, the, the thing. Yeah, it's almost like that mechanic is really dumb. Yeah, it is. Back it air is, is going to finish things off, though. Jacos, really good lead right now, actually. Could take this game, too. Out of nowhere here. Just really finding this damage with the Levin Sword really often, honestly. These aerials, these low hops are, are really great for them right now. And honestly, that's the thing is like, J Cost is fine in this matchup, I think, because I, I, as slow as Robin is, he just still has to get inside a lot of the time in order to fight. And so J Cost is cool with just waiting things out until they're in the range and then short hopping into some Levin aerials. Okay, I like the Z-Drop book. Just trying to throw something out there. Uh, Diora, again, I think is committing to some of these longer lasting options and is getting caught uh, at a lot of detriment here. Jacos able to really whip punish very well. And that's super important because once you get Pyramithra off stage, then it's, uh, then it's the killing blow time. Oh, a lot of pressure put online, but it's all for naught here. Diora, oh. definitely a kill percent right now. Jacos knows it. Gonna start playing for keeps here, play for the second two stock, but no, Diara can finish things off with that up smash from Pyra. Very nice, said get off of me, and that's kind of important because uh, in that situation, once once Robin gets too close, you gotta remember Robin, you, you got hands. You got, you got hands and uh, Robin cannot outbox you sometimes if you're if you're Pyra. A cause could still definitely get finished off here if Diara finds this damage. We Weber could absolutely take it to game three here if they play their cards right. Jacos got to play the zoning game to AT at the moment, doing it so far. Nice dash attack on that Ooh. get up here, but okay. so much pressure at the moment. We're oh back no. on Pyra. So oh no, much please. danger at the moment. Oh, oh no. Who oh, actually oh, falls out of what? it? Wow, falls out of it. I think probably actually held out so that they don't get hit by that. That's going to kill for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, once you get hit by the arc fire, uh, Jacos is not wasting any time. going to go right for it. Well... That's going to be a 14 to 1 lead for Sacramento State up against Weber. They have won these three consecutive sets and they've yep. done it in a pretty solid manner. I mean, Weber, they really have to fight tooth and nail at this point in order to take this lead back. I mean, no question they have to win these next two sets, but they have to do it really decisively at this point as well. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I, I think that this was a... A telling set right like the momentum ball is starting to roll now for sacramento state they're getting a lot of a lot more points in these sets than they were uh in the earlier ones so uh i would say the steam is starting to pump and i think it's going to be interesting to see what happens in set number four because uh they're really tearing away for sure absolutely yeah j cost great performance there keeping sacramento state's blood pumping and Weber State's fear is intact at the moment. We're going to head into our fourth set in just a moment. Right. So uh, let's see. I'm trying to see what cool. we're banning or whatever. Okay, so, so Sacramento's going to bring in Papel. Mm -hmm. We'll see who Weber ends up bringing in as well. I think both of these teams, they're definitely vying for those higher seeds, but I think they're both also safe, maybe? Uh, I want to yeah, say mean, they're both safe. I mean, yeah, it looks like Weber State does qualify for conference championship regardless, uh, and they'll be playing Wichita State on 4-1, so that's April 1st. That is no fool's joke. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, Weber is going to send in Yo-Yo Guy. As Yo-Yo well for Guy. This yeah. Ness? Ness player, possibly? Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, maybe. Oh, man. Maybe a Ness will enter, uh, will enter the ring, perhaps. But, yeah, I, I think that... Well, uh, yeah, Weber's guaranteed because of their seeding. Sacramento, I think because of their point differential, I think they still want to win this because then they'll right. retain their their seeding and then if they don't even if they don't make this top spot at first they'll still have eligibility for the championships which they can try and ride right. through right and get that uh, and get that last qualifying spot potentially yes. uh depending yes. on what kind of run they have mm -hmm. but um i mean yeah, but they're way, looking very I, good you know, here i mean i mean yeah. all things considered if they if they do well in these next couple of sets they'll be uh set at a good record i think a 5-3 record will give them what they need uh, to continue on so I think the problem that I that I tend to start seeing is like we're in this last week and and when you look at this in like a in, in a vacuum both of these teams they're in perfectly solid situations but when you zoom out at this bigger picture this gigantic yeah. rack of standings and you have these these gargantuan titanic teams that we've seen absolutely decimate competition I mean both of these squads are hanging on by a thread right now so I mean you can bet yeah. that, they're, that they're still gonna be fighting tooth and nail regardless of of their of their clinch or whatever you know Right, because I mean they're gonna need to to take this as practice, right? Obviously, I think these two are in the same conference. Um, mm -hmm. I think they're in the same division, so I think you're right. Super important that they get the data on each other. But remember, uh, they did only start, I think, a, a few weeks back, right? They they don't have the rest of the time in the season to get data on the other teams that they might need to know uh, going forward. So. Unfortunately, yeah, they just did not uh, get the ability to play as many teams as some of the others who had been in the season from the very beginning. Uh, so it is super important that they take the time to perhaps research the next teams, make sure they do their research, and figure out how to prepare uh, should they take this. I gotta say, I think it's great to see all this enthusiasm coming from these late teams that that still you know make such a splash. In uh, in these standings, you know Arlington and Sacramento and Weber, all of these, you know the, the the this new blood that's entered the contest halfway in, and they performed so well. It it, it keeps this it keeps this thing fresh. It keeps all the teams on their toes. It, it's really awesome to watch yeah. everyone sort of come into their own and uh, and get their own little bits of practice in, uh, especially as we uh, as we start hitting the post season. So yeah. awesome. So we're uh, we're banning FD Smashville and PS2. Okay, so it'll probably be town. Yep, town and city. Yep, it's yep. gonna be town. <laughs> All right, makes sense. Uh, so town and city long stage gives a lot of people a lot to work with. We might see we might see Roy ZSS. Uh, I could probably see Ridley Sephiroth. A couple others, a couple other zoners. Maybe maybe uh, Mega Man. Although I don't know if Mega Man would ban PS2. You know, lots of options, lots of zoners. Yeah, I think of course. On time. No, I mean you, you got a pseudo you got FD. A big roster that you can kind of run with. Uh, mm. You can kind of run whatever with. Um, town and city sure. is is one of those maps where I think you can kind of make it malleable to to your own play style. Um, and, and if you know your advantage, then you can play to it on a place like town and city because mm. it has those platforms, and at the same time, it has those really small horizontal blast zones. And so mm. I think you can sort of find find your own element somewhere in a stage like that. Yeah, it's so a perfect sure stage for cheaters. We will see. <laughs> I'm sure we will see both of these players, uh, uh, you know, step into their own on yeah. uh, on this stage. We'll both see. We'll, we'll see them both comfortable. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll see some. Um... Some some quick and stolen stocks. That's what I'll say. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping to see some some early early kills off the sides. Yeah. Uh, maybe some spikes. Honestly, you know, it's town and city. You can get some spikes. Spikes are kind of nasty. Of course, of course. You could always always love a good spike. I think after watching that seven minute game like two sets ago, I feel like mm. we're all kind of drained from Bro. watching a game that isn't going really quickly. Plant. And I feel like this might be a game that goes kind of quickly. All right, I'm I'm not gonna lie. This is the weirdest matchup I think I've ever seen in practice, right? Like in an actual uh -huh. game. Like right. this. This is unheard of. Lucario, don't know that character. Uh, I, I know I know the character. I just don't know. I don't know anyone who plays the character. Right, you just don't see people play it. And then Piranha Plant. I mean, who? That's that's that sort of fringe. That fringe character that you see every once in a while. It's you funny. Cringe wrong. 
it's it's funny. I think every time a, a character has been a joke character, we've seen them sort of not be great in the game that they're introduced in, and then in later games, they just absolutely rock the competition. Like, not we saw that with Rob. We saw, true. We, like, we saw that with Rob, we saw that with Wii Fit Trainer and Ultimate now, we see that in Pichu and Ultimate as well. Like, these characters, they need some time to, I don't even want to say, I don't even want to say grow, I want to say, like, ferment. ferment. Yeah. Ferment, yeah. Exactly. No, Yo-Yo guy, though, finding a quick stock off that sideline, exactly what you want to see, uh... but, oh, the Patui bouncy is going to equalize things right out the gate, dude. The Aris, I, the I've never seen this matchup, but I love it. Oh my god, the Aura Sphere bouncing off the shield while the Batui bounces off the platform and smacks yeah. you right in the face. <laughs> you hate to see it, Yo-Yo guy's gonna have to hold that, uh, but right now, getting some good strings, uh, you're gonna need to get this percent because of course, like, once the Aura starts kicking in, that kill Ooh. power is gonna make it hard for you to get some of these Ooh. strings. 97% by the way! Look, Yo-Yo yeah. guy's fine with taking some damage, but Papel exactly. just racks it up so quickly on this Piranha Plant. Ooh. Down B gonna get punished here with the side B and the Aura there Sphere right out of it. Finds another one to keep it sniping, but Papel finds the coverage with the down B. Oh, this game is so unpredictable. I'm surprised. You know, we're seeing a lot of uh, stem extension from Papel. Oh. Uh, not really uh, Plant's best move, I'm not gonna lie. Like, Patui is kind of what you should be focused on. Uh, the, the the stem is getting caught here. Uh, Yo Yo guy able to benefit from that overextension. Yeah, go for the Batui, go for the poison, and then go for the up smash when Yo Yo guy is right on you. But I mean, that's another sort of problem is like shielding on that ledge is also not super viable against oh, Lucario because he can just grab you with that side B, especially at that high aura. But Pell gonna cancel that nice and quick. Hey, it's a quick game, but it's also a close one. Yeah, for sure. We are firing right back and forth. Um, these damage. Percents are racking up very quickly because you know Lucario can get a lot of those strings and uh -oh. uh, uh, I mean let's no. be real like Plant just hits hard. Hey, Plant hits Plant heavy. Heavy. <laughs> Plant hits heavy. <laughs> true, 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 true. Yo, yo, uh, guy. Right now, yeah, he's got the he's got uh -huh. the damage going. Papel just can't find his can't find his in just yet. Right. I mean, we're just looking for a good kill option here. Yo-Yo Guy kind of throwing out almost every option in the book right now. Papel Ooh. looking for the read, does get it. That's a lot of damage. And now the cloud nice. as well. Not able to get another one of these down bees. However, we're still fishing for it. Stop down being. You got to stop down being, Papel, especially in that sort of state. You yeah. have so many other options. You can short hop Nair for all I uh -oh. care. Just don't put yourself in that good sort of place job. where you can get side bead. Yo-Yo wow. Guy. Taking the first game in like seven for Weber State. Now right. up to two points. Well, that was that was really good because I mean, you could saw that last kill. Basically, it ended up being him forcing, uh, forcing Propel into shield, and then the turnaround saw that he was still holding shield and goes to the command grab. Very nice stuff. But let's just check out some of this other stuff. Like, how many down bees can we catch on camera in these in these replays? <laughs> that was two that were punished right there. With the stock. Yeah. Oh, that was... And then that. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was was, that was silly. That was yeah. silly. Oh, man. This coverage right. that the Aurasphere had as well was really well done by Yo-Yo Guy. Just yes. that constant pressure on that ledge and then forcing Papel to jump and then find a yep. stupid option and then punishing for it. That's that happened true. twice in a row on that edge. Right. That was the third. This is the fourth? Nah, this right is now, Papel's like, yeah. kill. This is Papel's kill. Okay, so yeah, that was Yo. So yeah, that's true. That's that true. was a pun. Then... And then I think there's one more? I don't know if he downbees here again. No, no, no. This is he turns around. He turns around and comes. Oh yeah, he turns around at it. Yep. All right. So yeah, yeah like three or four times that downbee was punished. Yeah. yeah, and that's kind of where that's that's where we're seeing the deficits come in because you're losing stocks because of it. Um, unfortunately, it is sort of an over reliance again. Like that's the problem with plant is that it just it forces you to rely on those few good tools because the rest of his kit is kind of clunky. Yeah. Papel has nearly done their job regardless, though, I think. Mm. Weber, they basically, Yo-Yo Guy needs to two-stock here, and then the last player for Weber needs to get a double three-stock. That is Weber's only what? chance of winning right now. That is all they what? have. And so, Papel, I mean, as long as he keep this two, as long as he keeps this to a one-stock game again, then Sacramento, they have the guaranteed dub, which I think is uh, is 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 solid enough for them. They'll they'll happily take that to the bank and, and do a yeah. higher spot in the in, in the leaderboard. For sure, for sure. I think they're they're just trying to tap it in at this point, right? They're just like, you know, we want to get the points for sure, but like, 
you know, don't break the bank for him, right? Like, mm. literally just play it safe and do what you got to do. Retain your stocks, right? If you can stock tank in a situation like this, it's super important. Yeah. So we're banning Smashville, Lila, and Yoshis here from Weber's, uh, from Weber's Lucario. Um, yeah. I understand this picks, of course, always ban Lila. Uh, Smashville... Uh, the platform Piranha Plant can have a little too much fun on that. I mean, Yoshi's, Lucario's, Aura Spheres especially have a way worse time. So I understand all of those bans. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, it it makes sense. I would say... We'll have to see where we're going. Probably Battlefield? Okay. Yeah, Battlefield. So that's smart. So we're going Battlefield. Good for Plant. You want to use, if you're going to go for the Down B, or at least the Patui. The Patui can create some... Oh, yeah. Oh, he's switching characters, so never mind. Oh, okay. Be something else. So Pell off what we'll see. the piranha plant here. What's a good counter for Lucario? Uh anything with a sword. Yeah. Yeah, anything with a sword. That's a very good probably answer. Probably Ike. Probably Ike. Sword and kill power. As long as you can kill uh Lucario before it survives. You huh. know what? I'm just completely wrong. You do have some kill power though. It's game. Yeah. Of and you can bucket uh, that aura sphere as well. I, I oh, mean yeah. Those have been rare occasions when the Aura Sphere has even come out to be fired at the Pell. A lot of the time, it's just been used for pressure. But uh, it's always good to have that sort of thing. And, and of course, some much better out of shield options, I think, Game & Watch has than uh, than Piranha Plant. I gotta say, I appreciate that we're using uh, white Game & Watch on Battlefield. Mm -hmm. Kind of criminal, but I'm okay with it. I'll, I'll allow it. I can still see the game. I can see the I'm, game. I'm just not just, enjoying it. <laughs> just like, wow, this is... This is a, <laughs> my a eyes strain. Just, my eyes just have to work, and you know that's what? Right, that's right. If, if if my if my eyes end up uh, end up needing to find, you know that that sort of work in a game <laughs> like this, then I can walk out of this satisfied with how well I've. That's right. You this know? game is giving me an astigmatism right now, but that's all right. <laughs> we're we're getting uh, some percents on both sides. Yo yo guy trying to uh, to stay alive. Good Oof. hit with the uh, the aura sphere. Appel's gonna be able to read those and, and get conditions so that they can bucket those. We can only hope, yeah. Up smash, missing orders for a couple charges, so Papel has to get out of jail for a moment there. Yo yo guy again, really keeping pace here, but again, all Papel really has to do is play this clock, play till the bell rings, and keep it to a one stop game. Ooh. And that's a great Ooh. start with the burial on the down smash. Papel is pretty nice right now. That was kind of sick. I love it. The parry on the upbeat, the down smash. It was all textbook. Very, very nice stuff. Papel looking for the rapid jab as well. A lot of pressure, but the roll in actually, oh. no, the double roll in. Yo Yo Guy could have had a good punish there. Unfortunately, he overcommits the same option twice. Oh. No, that, that Don't you is dare. That is scary. If that had been a nine, oh my god, if that oh. had been a nine. That was a six. It was a six. It was. It, if that had been a nine, though, well, if that it had was been a counter. Nine. It would have been a counter. Exactly. Yeah, that's a break. Yeah, it would have been countered regardless, though. But yeah, Yo Yo guys, not gonna fall for that twice. Gets the counter on the, on the judge and uh, yep. takes things to a two v two here. But he's still playing catch up. Doing a pretty good job at it so far too. Capel has to start out low this time. Good forward smash to gain some distance here. Bucket to kind of intimidate. A lot of these prompts have fallen on Papel, and he's sort of faltered a lot of this time and yo-yo guy is really taking advantage of it you can tell very disciplined lucario yeah but right now the drift back in with the back air gets uh yo-yo guy back off stage now trying to retake control here uh papel had been doing a good job catching some of the stuff but now a straight back air is going to take the stock and now uh, papel looks like they're trailing behind a little bit is struggling oh. to find the stock and right now any damage that yo-yo guy is able to rack on that's all extra gratis <laughs> One more stock to get. Yo yo guy cannot lose this stock right now, or else it is a guaranteed dub for Sacramento State. Gonna keep playing that distance. Did that dash attack just just uh, clang with yeah. the aura sphere? Yeah. What? Yeah. Alright. Are you joking? Yeah, Dude, the car is trash. I, I don't know. Yukario unfortunately does have some uh, some weaknesses there. Yes. Oh, oh! no. But... <laughs> wow. You read that roll. Wow. You, know you got that. Took us back to I, kindergarten for a second. I just like the I just like the the lead in like Lucario's trash and then catches the biggest. <laughs> Lucario's yep. trash. Game. Lucario's trash. <laughs> Lucario wins. We're like, well, you know, it, and that's ultimate. It'd just be like that. It's true. Welcome no, look, any character can contend. I just, uh, you know, Lucario just doesn't contend often. Of course. the thing. Of course. The Yo-Yo guy, a contender, and Weber State, still a contender 
for this match, they just cannot drop a stock from here on out. You know, it should be yeah, pretty easy, honestly. That is that is true. That is true. <laughs> it's going to be really tough because, uh, yeah, and that would that would lead to a tie, right? That would be like that would be a tiebreaker, I believe. Hey, check out this sick game that we had last. <laughs> Yo, that's the Rob Juke just oh, the really Robin doesn't want to look at Lucario again. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's the plant. It's the plant. Okay, here we go. Plant getting uh, getting RS sphered right in the face. <laughs> And then ready for that. Uh, bam! Sick. Dang. Super sick, dude. Super duper sick. For sure, for sure. Lucario, uh, I'm not going to lie. Like, not a character I would have expected to see, but I, I'm i happy I saw it. I'm glad I saw it. Yeah, I'm here for it, for sure. Watching Lucario know how to play the game is, is always something that's really exciting to see yeah. because his hitboxes, especially his aerial ones, are so, like, vaguely different than a lot of the other hitboxes yeah. from other characters. And uh, and it, it really, as someone who, is, who has played Lucario very mildly, it honestly, it feels like you're playing a completely different game when you have him in your pocket. Yeah, honestly, like, Lucario was, I loved Lucario in Brawl. Like, Brawl Lucario, I thought mm -hmm. was the cool, one of the coolest characters. So, of course. Uh, to see that he's not that good in this game really makes me sad. But there are still people like Yo-Yo Guy who are, uh, who are playing the character and honestly doing pretty well. So, good, good stuff. Yeah, doing perfectly fine for themselves. So it's going to be Zoro coming out from uh, Sacramento State and Doc Hunt, uh, not Doc Hunt, Doc Hunt uh, coming over from uh, from Weber. Um, we're banning Smashville, FD, and uh, what is SB? Small Battlefield. I'm dumb. I, I didn't see the F and my brain didn't register. Mm, I see, I see. Okay. Uh, all right, well... I'm not sure. What are we going? Do you think is Doc Hunt is a Doctor Mario and Dunk Hunt main, or Honestly, is that just their name? I, well, <laughs> they have. A funny, it's a very funny profile picture. Yeah, the the profile picture is like some weird like Frankenstein amalgamation of Doc oh, means, and the yeah. pill on he Duck, Hunt. Duck Hunt. So yeah, so he, he mains Duck. Hunt. Okay, so he mains Duck Hunt, but no Doc. I guess not. Huh. Yeah. Is about me on Discord is I'm one of those like six people that main Duck Hunt on Ultimate. So we'll get That's to funny. see some Duck Hunt at the end of this set, dude. I adore Duck Hunt. His trap setting is so different. It's so unique. Um, and and while games can sort of stretch out and while his gameplay can get a little stale sometimes, mm. pun intended, um, I I still love the kinds of setups that you can that you can pull with Duck Hunt. Very very different. Very unique. Yeah, I definitely see a little bit of Duck Hunt in my region. It's it's a cool enough character. I always say it's like it's like Diet Pac-Man in this game. <laughs> like it's sort of like Diet Pac-Man because it's like the trap play is good. Yeah. Um, it just you kind of get outclassed by like characters that can do what you do but better. Right. Yeah. No, I think that <laughs> that's such a good analogy. Is <laughs> that's so good, Budget Pac-Man. That's great. Um, I, so, uh, we know who Doc Hunt is playing. We don't know who Zoro is going to pick. Um, I, I guess like a counter to Doc, I guess a counter to Duck Hunt. I feel like I've seen Zoro and honestly, I want to say Sephiroth again. Like, I don't know why mm. I want to say Sephiroth, like another Sephiroth, but I think <laughs> it might be. Um, you just really feel like the Sephiroth. May, actually, I don't, I don't like Sephiroth that much. Like, that's the problem. Really? You could have nah. fooled me. I'm not a huge fan. I like. I think. I just think he's like. Again, like there's other characters that do what he does, but better. Well. We so yeah. Well, we are seeing Sephiroth. <laughs> wow, I'm so good at this. No shot. It's actually Sephiroth. So That's insane, this. dude. I don't know how I knew that. I don't know. I, I just remembered weird things. But yeah, Duck Hunt versus Sephiroth. Uh, this is sort of tough because Duck Hunt has some great range pressure. However, uh, Sephiroth's Masamune just kind of invalidates a lot of your kit, particularly the can. You just know how to get around the can, and you kind of win the matchup sometimes. And again, you got to remember, if Doc Hunt loses a single stock this entire set, then Weber State can kiss that potential even record goodbye. Sacramento will have the guaranteed dub, so all Zoro has to do is knock off just one, and then all they have to do is try and focus on how many points they can end up taking in the end here. It might be none, it might be all, but you will only see when the first stock is taken where this matchup may end up going, and who is guaranteed the dub 
here. Good set with the can here to make sure damage is staying even, but uh -oh. Doc Hunt doesn't need even. He uh -oh. needs the win, and the up air is not going to land, but neither will Doc Hunt's own. 103%. So much danger at the moment. Stuck at the edge here. Wing comes out. So much pressure right now. Oh my god. Right. I mean, trying to go for the clay pigeon point blank against Zoro uh, is kind of hard, although it can work because oh! now we're seeing this. The, the get off so tools that Sephiroth doesn't have uh, can't do anything there, right? Because he's he just doesn't have anything to do uh, that gets you away from him in that situation. There's no combo breaker tool. Uh, right now, Doc Hunt in a good place. Uh, I love the setups. We're seeing it. Uh, I think Zoro has shown a good knowledge of how to get, how to deal with Can. Knows how to like hit it to reverse the direction, and so far that has been working uh, as a good strategy for them. That's the thing about about Duck Hunt's can is like when you play against it, you don't really want to like contest it because then you're in so much danger of, of getting exploded. Um, right. On the other hand, you kind of just want to like get it out of the way and just make sure that it's not part of your fight because then not only can you not be hit by it, but Duck Hunt can't utilize it for a good uh -oh. couple seconds in that fight, and that's super crucial. Duck Hunt uh -oh. still not dead just yet, and Zoro at 100% right now. Duck Hunt actually keeping himself alive with these, uh, just by playing this really long-winded game of keep away. Hasn't lost this stock yet, which means that Weber State is still in this, but how much longer are they in it for? This is really the obstacle course right now. Doc Hunt has been covering so much of the stage with all of these projectile options, just mixing it up from Dude. the neutral B to the side B to the down B. Dude. It's all starting to come out in good ways. And 161, one of these explosions is going to basically seal the deal for Sephiroth. Dude, the way that Doc Hunt is on top of these angles is so great. Dude, I really want to see a three stop. It, just to keep it for as long as possible. I would love to see a three stock here. I mean, it's oh! going to be tough. It's not going to happen. Oh! The uh, the F tilt will right. catch and clip Doc Hunt. Uh, now, finally leading into the up air. A good, consistent kill confirm. They're looking for a little bit more damage here for the final stock. Uh, Zoro has to be able to make up this lost ground and very quickly. Look, Weber State, they may not grab the dub, but honestly, they are very easily, I think at this point, going to keep Sacramento from having a positive point differential going into the postseason, which I think is a great achievement in itself. A 5-3 yeah. team not having a winning point differential is, is, is a kind of great thing to pride yourself on. So I think Weber State should definitely be proud of themselves and keep on fighting because Doc Hunt is really making a statement for why Weber State could should absolutely be kept in the conversation right now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is huge right now because uh, Doc Hunt, again, just keeping Zoro at bay, the projectiles not being able to be stuffed out by the disjoints that Sephiroth has, and can on ledge is so intimidating right now. Uh, as light as Sephiroth is, you cannot make any false move here. Nice can control, making sure whatever ledge that Doc Hunt has to go back to is always a danger. Back air pressure going, and now on his own sort of edge guard. Nice mix up with the angling back, thanks to that attack. Play Pigeon will not do much just because Zoro is already so high up. Doc Hunt oh, forced no. to recover, goes too low, and it's gonna be a one stock game regardless. Yeah, that was a bit unnecessary because now they're just looking to close it out and they have more than enough opportunity to do so. The up air clips, and uh, yet again, Zoro loses this one. Doc Hunt holding something together for Weber State. Uh, despite the, their past setbacks. 14-7 game. Can Doc Hunt take one more to keep this matchup nice and tight and keep Sacramento fearful of this squad that absolutely has some, uh, has some bite behind its bark? Doc Hunt, really solid display there, and it wasn't even as long a match as we've seen previously in the set, which surprised me more than anything else. That's true, that's true. So, yeah, I'm wondering, like, we... You definitely have an interesting, uh, interesting set here to uh, to close it out. You know, Duck Hunt versus Sephiroth. Uh, what, what a battle of the distance demons. Although they are not officially named as such, I would definitely <laughs> argue that they are. It was hard to focus on what Zoro was doing just because of of how much was in front of that screen thanks to exactly. Doc Hunt. But yes. I think when Zoro got inside, he did perfectly fine. It was just this long game of poking with, 
with the occasional attack that and Zoro had to kind of just get away with. And, you know, it only came out to two stop. Right. I mean, it's really interesting that you talk about how much was going on. Like, that is what Duck Hunt is sometimes. It's misdirection, right? You kind of have to be a magician. You kind of have to make <laughs> Zoro look at the shiny thing and then realize, oh, wait, I'm actually dead because of this and this and this other thing that have all led me to this one situation. You've been funneled into the losing opportunity by uh, by Duck Hunt because he keeps like having your attention over here while having something else on the other side. So Yeah, it really is kind of that long-winded corralling game that you like to see Duck Hunt play. Put the can over here, put a clay pigeon over there, strike you yep. down, be down here. Where are you going to go? Up in the air? I got an up air for that. You, yep. you just have to be prepared for every single option, and you have to get to the fact where you close off every single option, but the one that is most expected and the most punishable, and that's Duck Hunt's playstyle, which is what makes him definitely not the strongest character in the world, but also one of the most fun characters to watch played at top level. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, Raito is one of those characters that we've oh, seen Raito. Duck Hunt go yeah. crazy, but Sephiroth, uh, again... I think has a has a decent place in this meta. We'll see yeah. how it goes on Kalos. Uh, Duck Hunt is one of those kind of slippery characters because they do have just a lot of like threat when they're fading away. And starting damage with that side B there, thirty eight percent up, and Zoro oh catches the can as well. That's a great starter on this stage here for game number two. Zoro looking to make this a uh, a uh -oh. four to one. Serious here, set wise. All right, but look Sacramento at all this damage State. the Duck Hunt has gained in oh, these man. three oh, interactions. God. Already, it is their lead yet again to play with, uh, and Zoro just kind of pushed back against the wall in too many situations. Duck Hunt looking like they're trying to play a much more comfortable wow. game. That's going to catch them on the top on the uh, on the platform, and that'll do it. That was so much, an, and it came from such a distance as well from Duck Hunt. You couldn't really see it coming until it was already there out of nowhere. So much damage, and now 27% here. Doc Hunt still looking for this momentum and still finding it so effortlessly at the moment. Still catching him in the sky, dude. Right, and then just getting more more pressure out on, like we see the down B gunman. Uh, we see the clay pigeon, we see the can as well. All of these options coming together to again force Zoro into an unfavorable situation. Uh, trying to get some of these flares on ledge, but right now Duck Hunt kind of playing comfortably, not really afraid when they're uh, in what is supposed to be disadvantage. Yeah, I I love Duck Hunt just still kind of egging on Zoro. Like, yeah, I'm on ledge, and you got a really powerful projectile that's normally a great edge guarding tool, but I have this can that can go boomy boom that I will place right on the edge right there. Would you like to make it go splody? Please do. I would love that for you. And uh -huh. Dakut is it's so comfortable and makes Zoro so uneasy. <laughs> oh my god. These mix-ups, like pinpoint accuracy with the can just covering so much space, knowing when Zoro is going to be using the jumps, particularly the extra jump that one wing affords you. Uh, there is so much pressure here, and it's all horizontal, so uh, that's where Doc Hunt has the uh, the advantage right now. Zoro cannot get in, uh, and when he does, sometimes he gets caught by another up there, a full stock lead here yet again for Doc Hunt. Zoro has that ground control, going to sacrifice it to try and get closer to that edge. Back on the center now, Doc Hunt getting that setup ready. Down B and Cans gets the grab into the can, into the up air, into the up air. 61% out of nowhere and center stage control. And it's not done yet. Well, I guess it is. Finally, Zoro fights back, gets a grab, and now a nice little string here. Got to get the edge guard as well. Looking like, no, you're going to go a little bit too hard and too deep. And now... Doesn't get anything for it. Uh, Doc Hunt still able to retake stage control once more, and Zoro just cannot make these approaches count where necessary. I love this patience from Doc Hunt as well, recognizing when he he uh, needs to punish a little bit lighter because he knows that a smash attack won't be able to kill, and just launches out a can instead, goes right back to that basic playstyle that he knows will lead to more long-term damage to set up a later great punish uh, to lead into a kill move. Wall jump wait, out of the upbeat will not lead to anything. Why does Doc, why does Doc have a wall jump? <laughs> why? Man, that, clay pit, that clay pigeon has such a long cooldown though, I gotta say. True, true. true. All right, man. now, this is looking pretty bad. Like, Zoro gets Doc Hunt to the last stock, but at 114, again, like Sephiroth Super Light, we mentioned it before, uh, these cans, they just look even stronger every single time you connect <laughs> with one. 
Oh my god, Doc Hunt is just keeping it so unpredictable where the where the can is gonna end up landing. Oh a lot of the time you just see him just like right near the can, like, am I going to hit it? When am I going right. to hit it? What am I going to hit it? And then just juggling it too. Like exactly. Very oh my <laughs> You've gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. You're done. You're done. Get out of here. You're crazy. That's insane. Doc Hunt is probably the most proficient can specialist I think I've ever seen in my life. That is probably the hypest Duck Hunt. That's that's insane. Let's see some replays. Let's let's go back into this. Show me that again. Like we're, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna go back to the beginning. This is this is the this is the beginning. This is on battlefield. So sorry, I gotta remind you. This is coming from the team that was guaranteed to lose. That's oh crazy. my god, that I mean, was the, right. so good. That's the thing. These these were these were one stocks, right? So Zoro not going to just like, you know, lose for 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 that for free, right? Still of brought it to last stock every single time. Um, would have been nice to have a three stock for Weber State. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen either way for either game. But uh, the play was immense, and as good as Zora was at trying to get around the uh, the obstacle course yet again, <laughs> I, it was so hard. Yeah, Doc Hunt. I, I, look, Zoro went down kicking and screaming for sure, but he went down sure. regardless. Those setups yep. just did so much damage over and over again. And against Sephiroth, such a light character, as we've said over and over again, eventually you'll find a place where you can kill. A lot of the time, it was with those up airs as well. Just the second that Zoro went up, Doc Hunt just made sure that he went right back up yet again. And very reliable mm. tools, just never really ran, uh, never really ran dry. For Doc Hunt yeah. in that uh, in that in that matchup, just really well done. Yeah, for sure. Had some good out of shield options. Knew where they could get the big punishes, and again, just their mix ups like making the can float through the air uh, with ease. It was so it was so well done uh, by Doc Hunt. I, I love watching this some of this stuff. Like this is where it gets really spicy. Yeah, no, those those juggles with the cans from the ground as well were were kind of ridiculous. This was a bit of a flub from uh from doc hunt there but um yeah. this final stock my god get that can get it get it to, it just get sets it, it up boom, set it up all the way over there he's just so ready for zoro's movement right. sets up another can gets it on the ledge is like okay are you ready for this are you ready for this sets it then, back the other way right. forget Dude, forgets that's about it so good forgets about it and then waits do it again show me back throw into oh! the can that was on the final hour of that can too. Yes, it was literally Dude. about to like explode from from timer. Yeah, so I don't know if it's more impressive that that probably wasn't premeditated either. I can't tell if I, mean, I can't tell me. if it's better that it was planned or 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 or, or unplanned. It was totally. I mean, no, way, it's it, so totally cool. it was planned. It was totally planned. Like I mean, that's the th that's the same reason that uh, like snakes will will back throw into C four, right? Right. Same stuff. Yeah. Oh man. Well done. Too. Well done from Doc Hunt to finish things off. Still, though, Sacramento State are the winners, and when we come back, we'll have an interview with them. We'll be right back.
Hello, everyone. Sorry about the wait. We have been informed that Sacramento does not wish to opt to the interview. So we're just going to go ahead and end it here. Obviously, congratulations to them for winning and good luck to them and Weber State, who are both uh, looking to be in the championship. So uh, we will hopefully look to see good, th- uh, see good things from these teams. Uh, obviously, I'm Nerf. You can find me at NerfCasts. Uh, I'm doing there for all Twitter and you know YouTube stuff. You can find me there. Um, Tenrec, where can they find you? You, got, you, you guys can find me on TenRecYT on Twitter and Twitch, as well as TenRec without the YT on, on YT on YouTube. Um, but yeah, make sure to follow everyone on uh, on EGF, all of the channels. There are so many of them, but for good reason, because we have so many tournaments coming up soon. Over these next two or three months, we have like four postseasons going on simultaneously, yes. and you're not going to want to miss any of it. But until the next games that we have, it's been great having you here. We hope you have a great rest of your night. Take care.